Appreciate you guys being here. I don't know how I compete with cotton candy and um, happy hours, so uh, it's good stuff. Um, like I said, my name is Matthew Moses, um, and uh, just real quick, it's out of the way. I do work uh, for Walmart, and they wanted me to say that my presentation, comments, and opinions are not provided, and they're provided in my personal capacity, and not as a representative of Walmart. They do not reflect views of Walmart, and are not endorsed by Walmart. So a little bit about me, just real quick. Um, if I took three words, I'd probably say husband, father, runner. Like I mentioned, I read team at Walmart. Uh, in a previous role, I did app dev uh, for the incident response team. That was a lot of fun. None of that's super applicable to what I'm talking about today. Uh, what I'm talking about today are SAOs, right? <clears throat> and to provide a little context here, I uh, volunteer with an organization down in Northwest Arkansas. Very similar probably to like SecKC, if you guys remember there. We're just a group of like InfoSec professionals and hackers and students that get together once a month. And this last year, we um, had a booth at a conference, and I worked with, some of you might know Evan Wagner. Uh, he was putting together like a conference badge, you know, electronic badge like this. And uh, he reached out and um, wanted to make a SAO for our group, right? So this is our logo. I know it's really hard to see. I'll have a picture of it later. Um, but it's a really cool um, thing for our group, and so I, I kind of worked with him on that, and that's kind of the... Uh, the birth of this talk, right? I'm going to kind of provide a playbook that if you want to do something similar for your, your group or your organization, your company or your team, um, I think these SAOs are really cool and they're like a great way to build like loyalty to your group or brand or, or team or whatever it is. So you've probably seen these floating around at different conferences. Um, some have electronics in them like LEDs and resistors and different types of things and some don't. Um, I like to call them simple add-ons, but you all know that they're actually called uh, shitty add-ons. Um, and so if you go look at the specification, um, the one I've been looking at is out on Hackaday, there's links there. Um, and it's just a proposed specification on how to kind of make these interoperable. So if you get one at this conference, you could potentially go to another conference later this year and plug it on your badge and it just works, right? Um, so I'm not going to dive too much into those details, but we'll, we'll touch on those a little bit. So if you're interested in making one, this is kind of my bullet points for like how do you make one, right? So first, you're going to have to start off with some kind of idea. And I'm not much of like a very like artsy person. And so like, uh, if you're like me and you like computers, right, maybe you like use Dolly to like get some examples, like generate me an image of this or that, right? Or maybe you just take your company or your, like in our case, right, you just take your organization's logo, and that's kind of your basis. Uh, but from that point, then you're going to get, need to pivot to a design tool. And we'll talk about a few today. There's a lot out there, but something that will actually allow you to create your schematic if you're going to do electronics, and then, of course, the actual uh, design of the board. You'll also need someone to manufacture this, unless you just happen to have, you know, all the special PCB equipment and, at your house, which um, probably none of us do, but very few, maybe the badge pirates. Uh, but there's manufacturers overseas that will allow you to uh, ship off your file to them, and they'll create it for you and ship it back, right? Uh, so definitely not super expensive, but it is like a project that will require some cash. Um, especially like parts, right, if you're going to be buying LEDs and resistors or different things and like the pins to put them together. And then, of course, you'll need like, you know, basic soldering skills. Uh, so this is actually the one that I built from scratch for my talk. It's, uh, I kind of got its inspiration here from Kansas City with the, the badmintons. Um, uh, but an SAO is really just a printed circuit board, right? So if you rip open your, your computer at home, right, and you look at your motherboard or you open up like any sort of electronics, right, that board inside there is a PCB, right? It's a printed circuit board. Uh, SAOs, like I already alluded to, may or may not have electronic components. And really designing them just comes down to, you know, figuring out the shape and then figuring out what components you're going to put on there. And then if you want to get, like, really fancy, like some of these, um, of course, figuring out your design. And I'm not going to, like, talk about, like, the details of how you go about doing, like, really cool ones like this. I've got a, a link at the end of this presentation um, there's a great YouTube talk out there that kind of talks about how you can leverage the different layers of a PCB to achieve these effects. And so you can see from, this is like a screenshot of one of the tools that I was using. If you've used Photoshop before, it's very similar. There's a lot of different layers that make up an actual PCB, right? Uh, from your top layer to your, your um, solder mask and the silk screen and whatnot. And so you can use all that to your advantage to get those really cool shapes and colors and designs. And so it's really, really up to your imagination how you can achieve that. This was the standard I talk about. Um, if you look on your badge, I don't know if you guys have been to the soldering village. I highly encourage you to get there. Uh, but in the top, uh, I guess it'll be the top right corner, you're going to see a bunch of holes there. 
And if you go visit them, they'll give you um, one of these pieces here, right? And that's what you can solder on. And that's the piece that interfaces with these SAO boards, right? So on the back of this SAO board, again, that's probably really hard to see, but there are, are six little pins coming out of there. And so when you plug it in, um, one of them is going to be your power, right? Your 3.3 volts. One's going to be your ground. And then you've got a couple of GPIO pins, a data line, and then a, a clock line too. And again, for like a really simple SAO, you don't need to use any of that. You don't have to even accept the power, right? You could just have an SAO that just attaches to the badge, right? And that's, that's pretty cool. Um, in my example here, just with like a really simple, simple example, is like a blinking LED. All you need to do when you're building out your schematic is worry about the 3.3 volts and the ground. So you can, you can keep these uh, pretty simple. A couple tools you can use. Um, there's one called EasyGate EDA, and it's free. Um, I really recommend it. I felt like it was very approachable for like a beginner. Um, free account, log on, you can do everything you need to do uh, right there from like your web browser. You don't have to install anything. In fact, you can even, I'll talk about this maybe later, but you can, it actually integrates, uh, there's a company called JLC PCB. They integrate with that and it makes it really easy to say, I want to order this thing, right? So um, that makes it really nice. There's another one I kind of toyed around with. It's maybe, uh, you might check it out. It's called KiCad EDA. It is something you download and run. It may have a few more features. I can't talk a lot about it, but it's another option. And of course, you can Google, and there's probably others as well. So if you're going to put like electronics inside your badge, one of the first things you'll do when you get in one of these tools is kind of build your schematic. And I would even say at this point, take a step back and figure out what your schematic is going to look like, right? So if you've got wires at home and you've got a breadboard, you know, pop an LED in there, get a battery, and just kind of figure it out um, at that level. But when you've kind of got it ready to go, you can jump into the schematic and start kind of putting it together. And again, this one's really simple. I followed an example online. There's, there's people who have already kind of done blog posts about, hey, what's well, a basic schematic with a 3.3 volt and an LED. Um, and so when you're in Easy ADA, you can actually import the... Um, the thing on the top left there, this little piece, this is the SAO standard, right? That's the six pins. You can import that and drop it right in there. And then it's just a matter of grabbing the LED, dropping it on there. And I had a resistor in mind. I think these SAOs perform fine on their own without a resistor. So I, um, if I was going to redo this, I, I'd leave that out. But um, it's up to you guys. So once you have your schematic, right, and that's just, and I'm definitely not an electrical engineer, and I don't think you need to necessarily be an electrical engineer. You just need to know some of the basics. So once you've got this schematic, right, which describes your, your physical circuit, you can then do what's called an import into your PCB or update your PCB. And basically, an easy EDA will give you um, a really basic printed circuit board, right? Um, so there's a purple box around there. Not super exciting, right? But then you can like arrange your components, right? So you can see here's the SA, SAO, um, the, six, the two by three adapter there, and your LED light, and of course the resistor in my example here. But at that point, you can start working with your shape. That's kind of what I did is I took those, got rid of those purple lines and started putting my own uh, purple lines in there. And so since I was going with this like badminton style, I took the tool and I you know, sketched out um, what that looks like. So once you get your shape, you kind of make sure you arrange your components so they still uh, look correct. There's a lot of other details that go into this. Um, a lot of great tutorials online on how to use like Easy EDA, so I'd recommend them, just kind of given a high level here. But at some point, once you've got the PCB built, your modeling tool will actually do like a 3D rendering. And I found this like super useful, right? Because it allows you to kind of, I mean, again, it's still not physical, but it allows you to kind of take it and twist it and turn around and kind of reason about it to say, hey, do I have things on there correctly? Like, um, like for this one, like I really wanted it to face down, kind of like the badminton over in the, the field not far from here, right? Um, and so I had to kind of like reason about it and say, okay, when it's faced this way, the pins are facing this way. Uh, so the 3D viewer is really, really helpful to kind of get a sense of what it's going to look like. It won't be like exact, but it gets you there. And then again, ordering is really easy. Um, I'm not recommending any of these companies necessarily, but I've heard a lot of people use PCBWay.com. And the one that I used was JLCPCB.com. They're really good about um, allowing you to do like test batches, right? You can order five just for a few bucks and get them shipped to you. 
Uh, with JLC PCB, mine are actually manufactured overseas, so you do need to account for that. So if you're doing this for like a conference or for like a big team meeting or a group meeting, I'd give yourself plenty of like lead time, right? Like maybe like a month or two, especially if it's your first time. Because uh, on my experience, it was about two weeks, two, two and a half weeks, I think, to get the boards back. Um, and the first time, I did not get it right. I messed it up, and I, uh, I spent some time trying to figure it out. And I was like, oh, yep, I think I got it. I think I got it. That's what I did wrong. Um, and so I fixed it up, made a couple other tweaks, sent it over again, got them back. Still not right. <laughs> um, this was version two, but fortunately, I was able to kind of do a little hacking on it and just, like, get it to work. Um, but ideally, you know, if I was going to, like, uh, do like a big batch, I would probably do a version three, right, and fix, fix my mistakes there. One of the things you want to watch out for is like layers, right? So it's really hard to see here, but you can on, on PCBs, if you look at your badge, you can put like text, and I goofed, I put some of that text on the, um, the copper layer. And so it, when it was actually printed, even though it looked good on the screen, it was making connections on my copper lines that I didn't want to be there. Uh, and so basically my hack was to kind of scratch out some of it to get the circuit um, behaving the way it should be. Uh, but the other piece I wanted to talk about this, right, um, talking about building like loyalty to your organization, is like what can you do with these things, right? Of course you can sell them, you can trade them, you can just give them away. But like what my group did is we used them to kind of build our community, which I thought um, was, uh, it was a lot of fun to do. So like I said, this was in connection with the conference earlier this year, and our, our group's called Arkansas. And what we did is we directed people to our website, and we made a very like approachable CTF that you could, anybody could really solve in a matter of, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and they could even do it like on their phone while they were at the conference. And so we pointed them to our website, and we gave them like that first clue, right? So our CTF was called a chase around the web, and it was really designed to get people familiar with our organization. And so you kind of traversed from our website to some of our social media sites until you found the final clue, right? And we had a booth. Um, at the conference, and so once you had that final clue, you could come to us and we would get you uh, an SAO. So the first clue was, right, what did Pac-Man say when he saw our website? Dom, 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 right? So like super elite hacking, right, is you hit that F12 button, um, and you can see the, uh, um, in the source, source code here, we dropped our first clue, right? Uh, nothing super fancy, right? Just kind of tells them about us. Kind of takes them to our Facebook page, and so one of the things that we did is we posted this message like early on in the week, and then when we released the CTF, we went back and edited it, hopefully to kind of keep, keep it like a low profile. So, you know, part of the challenge was, is I think the second clue was like, I should have read the writing on the wall, right, on their wall. And so they would Google Arkansas, Facebook, right, and then find this. Kind of same thing, the Facebook one would take you to our Twitter page, um, where you'd get kind of like that final clue that you'd have to solve. Um, yeah, so you finally solve it and get that token. Um, so yeah, so this was their kind of reward for the CTF. That's a big picture of it there. We were able to put some of our branding on the back of it. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it. And again, um, Evan Wagner was our, my friend who actually designed it and printed it, and I was kind of there kind of learning from him and helping solder and put these together and kind of working on the CTF. So that was a really awesome experience. It got me really interested in this. So here's kind of an action shot of the badge, the conference badge with our SAO on it. And then, you know, putting it all together, right? Uh, so much like it here, we, there was a soldering village, and so when we distributed these to people, uh, we gave them the option. We said, hey, we, you can have the one that's ready to go, or we've just got the PCB, bo the PCB board, right? And they could take it to the village and get it wired up. And... Um, yeah, a lot of people really appreciated that, right? And they had a lot of fun, and it was a really good, like, takeaway for them. They felt quite accomplished, right? Um, soldering irons are hot, so um, definitely pack first aid. Okay, so just kind of summarizing here, kind of the playbook then. Um, I went through, the, right, the PCB designs, design phase, right? You want to follow that adage of measure, measure twice, cut once, right? You're probably going to be printing a few, few different batches until you get more proficient at it. Um, right, in ordering them, right, give your time to get another batch. Uh, likewise with parts, you know, make sure you plan ahead. Um, you got plant, uh, parts on the ready. Some of the things you'll need are um, the top right there. That's the uh, um, piece that you'll actually put on the SAO, which will connect to the uh, uh, the main conference badge, right? 
You may have LDDs, resistors, uh, whatever else you need there. And of course, you know, doing plenty of testing on it. All right, and then give people, you know, the pre-assembled option or the do-it-yourself option. Yeah, so just kind of wrapping up, um, some helpful resources here that I found helpful as I was kind of exploring uh, this process. This last link here at the bottom was the one I was talking about where they actually get into kind of more of the, the thought process behind being able to design and do kind of cool art on these, uh, on these PC, uh, PCB boards. But anyway, um, that's all I had. Just kind of a brief overview if anyone, I don't know if you have any questions. Um, but other than that, I'll be hanging out. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for listening in.